permanently. Here's what they do every day. A lot of us have felt bad about something we did at some point in our lives. We feel sorrow or sadness when we realize that something we did or didn't do in the past caused bad things to happen. Regret is a strong feeling that can be bad for our mental health. We'll talk about whether or not narcissists really feel bad about losing someone in this piece. Before you can understand this, you need to know why people feel sad and if they can really get over it. When we realize that we could have done something different in the past, we often feel sorrow or guilt. Sadness can be a strong motivator for some people to change how they act and what they do in the future. For some, it can be a constant source of stress and self-doubt. A person's ability to get over sadness often depends on how self-aware and emotionally intelligent they are. There is also the question of whether narcissists really grieve the death of a loved one. People who are narcissists need the energy and resources of those around them to stay alive, just like ants do. They try to hide the fact that they are predators by acting like they have no limits. In truth, though, they are empty, sensitive, and insecure people. This shows how they really feel about sadness and loss. Narcissists are different from us because they don't feel sad. They don't understand what other people are going through or how their acts affect other people. They only care about their own needs and wants and see other people as a way to get what they want. Because they don't see that person as a person with their own wants and needs, they don't feel bad or sorry when they lose someone. Narcissists may instead say sorry to get back power over the person they have lost. In order to get back in charge, they might try to make the person feel bad or responsible for the loss. Also, they might try to get the person back by lying about how things will change or by flattering and controlling them. I'm sorry in these ways, though, isn't real because it doesn't come from a real place of sadness or guilt. At the moment, the question is whether narcissists really feel bad about losing someone. They feel sad, but not in the way you might think of or understand it. You can have doubts about yourself after a failure, like when you break up with someone or lose your job. Still, here I am, wishing I had done something. For each of you, sadness may mean different things. A narcissist, on the other hand, can only see things and people that are important to them. It's like looking through a hole and only seeing the people and things you care about. Only people who deeply care about the narcissist's fake self are worth anything. You were the type of supply the narcissist wanted to keep if you gave them a lot of attention, money, closeness, or anything else they wanted. They didn't do it because they liked you or wanted to keep in touch, but because you were helpful and they couldn't find what they needed anywhere else. Consequently, a narcissist does not feel sad in the same way that you do. If I feel bad that they left, it's because I should have done more to keep them in my life. This isn't because I did not care about them, but because I can no longer get their value and rewards. They'll have to find a new partner who is ready to work as hard and give them the same amount of care. They would rather keep the relationship they have now than look for a new one. It is also easier to keep an employee than to hire a new one. They might miss having a maid or a cash machine, but they will miss having a partner who would love them forever and make them feel bad for using a cook service. Narcissists really need help, and it doesn't matter who gives it to them. This makes it simple for them to find someone else to take your place. There is no difference in who it is as long as it can meet the narcissist's needs. In this place, people don't care about each other. It's marked by pure egotism, where the only thing that matters is getting what you want. It's the worst kind of selfishness. In simple terms, a narcissist doesn't feel guilty the same way you do. They may say they're sorry, but it's not because they really feel bad, guilty or sorry. It's more like, oh, I should have done or said this to keep this source of supply in my life, 
because I was getting something out of it. Narcissists may try to get in touch with you after you broke up with them and say things like, I'm sorry I let this happen. God spoke to me last night and I had a breakthrough and realised this, etc. All of these things are meant to make you feel bad about yourself and give up on your goals. Narcissists don't have morals, so they can't really feel bad about what they've done. Each of us has our own ideas about what is right and wrong. Everything that was said to you is completely false and made up. Remember that narcissists only care about themselves. It's like how awareness leads our actions and helps us figure out what's real and what's not. What we did right and wrong, how to treat others, what we can and cannot do, and what to fear and what not to fear are all taught by it. This is something an ego can't do. They care so much about keeping up their fake image that they don't care what happens to you, even if you are being treated unfairly. That's why they won't feel guilty. If someone never really liked you for who you are, there's no point in being sad about their death. They only used you because they needed your resources and energy. It is important for other survivors to know how these people make up these lies and what they can do to stay alive. I would love to hear what your sad ego has to say. Leave a comment if you want to share your story. So, I'd like to talk more about this on a later show. We have to wait until then to get better. Narcissists may say they're sorry in the end, but their sadness is different from ours. Narcissists don't care about other people and can't see how their acts hurt the people closest to them. They don't feel sad or sorry when they lose someone because they see them as something that can be thrown away. Narcissists who say they're sorry aren't really sorry, they're just lying to get back in charge. Some people may feel bad about hurting someone and how it makes them feel, but this is not real sorrow. If you're with a narcissist, it's important to know these warning signs and not let them fool you. If you learned something from this video, please share your ideas and thoughts below. Until the next time we meet, we can keep fixing things. Have a good day. In the twisted world of narcissists, lies are their native tongue. They weave a web of deceit, concealing their true intentions and emotions behind a veil of falsehoods. It's essential to grasp this fundamental truth before delving deeper into their deceptive labyrinth. Intrigued yet? Let's unravel the web of deceit spun by narcissists as they perpetrate these ten common lies. First and foremost, narcissists excel at the art of flattery. They shower you with compliments, luring you into their snare with honeyed words. Picture this. You're going about your day when suddenly, a narcissist approaches, showering you with praise. Sounds delightful, doesn't it? But don't be fooled. Beneath the veneer of admiration lies a sinister motive. Their lavish praise is merely a facade designed to manipulate and control. They aim to chip away at your self-esteem, leaving you riddled with doubt and insecurity. Beware of their cunning tactics. When a narcissist showers you with praise, it's not genuine kindness, but a calculated ploy to assert dominance. This manipulation is perilous, especially when a sociopath attempts to charm you. Trust your instincts. If something feels amiss, it likely is. Don't let their flattering words cloud your judgment. Remember, you deserve authenticity and sincerity, not empty flattery. But fear not, for there is a way out of this labyrinth of lies. Stand firm in your truth, assert your boundaries, and surround yourself with genuine connections. Refuse to be ensnared by the deceitful allure of narcissists. You deserve nothing less than the best life has to offer, free from the shackles of manipulation. So, heed this warning, do not succumb to the siren soul of deceit. Arm yourself with discernment, fortitude, and the unwavering belief that you are worthy of genuine love and respect. 
Take back control of your narrative and embrace the authenticity that sets you free. Now, it's your turn to share your experiences in the comments below. Whether you've faced a narcissist head-on or have seen someone else grapple with their manipulative ways, your story matters. Remember, you're not navigating this journey alone. We've got your back every step of the way. When narcissists utter the words, I'm sorry, it's often just another layer of deception. Let's delve into the facade of apologies crafted by narcissists. There are moments when those two simple words ring hollow, leaving you with a sense of unease. Trust your intuition. You're on to something. Narcissists may utter apologies, but don't expect genuine remorse to accompany their words. It's merely a performance to maintain their facade and evade accountability. Ever pondered why their apologies lack sincerity? It's because their primary concern is not rectifying their wrongs but avoiding repercussions. When a narcissist utters those two words, pause and question their authenticity. Is it a genuine expression of remorse or merely another manipulation tactic? We invite you to join the conversation in the comments below. Share your insights, anecdotes and reflections. Have you encountered a narcissist's apology? How did it make you feel? Your voice matters, so don't hesitate to contribute. Let's foster dialogue and support one another through shared experiences. Narcissists are also notorious for making empty promises about the future. Ever encountered someone who paints a vivid picture of grand plans but fails to deliver? It's a familiar tactic employed by narcissists to manipulate others. They excel at weaving elaborate fantasies to keep you ensnared in their web of control. But why do they resort to such deceit? Simple, to maintain their dominance over you. Narcissists understand that dangling the allure of a promising future can keep you hooked, even if they have no intention of fulfilling their promises. Their priority isn't honesty, it's power. They'll say whatever it takes to retain their hold over you. Here's the truth. Don't expect narcissists to honor their word simply because they've put on a convincing act. They're skilled at deception and manipulation, using lies as tools to achieve their selfish ends. So, the next time they spin tales of grandeur, remember that actions speak louder than words. Now, it's your turn. Have you ever fallen victim to a narcissist's empty promises? Share your insights and experiences in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. The fourth falsehood narcissists spin revolves around their supposed wealth. Have you ever noticed how they boast about their riches, painting a picture of opulence and extravagance? Well, here's a reality check. Much of it is just smoke and mirrors. Narcissists derive pleasure from flaunting their wealth often leaving others feeling inadequate in comparison. They weave tales of lavish mansions and luxury cars, but the truth may be far more modest. Ever noticed how most of their ostentatious displays happen on social media? Just bought my dream house, they'll proclaim, while in reality, they might reside in a humble apartment and drive an ordinary car. There's no shame in that. What's truly deceitful is their penchant for boasting about falsehoods. Have you encountered a narcissist who loves to parade their supposed wealth? Recognizing these signs is the first step in distancing yourself from them. Another lie they perpetrate is when they utter the words, I love you. For a narcissist, these three words are mere tools of manipulation, devoid of genuine emotion. They utter them with the sole intention of garnering attention and approval from others. Fagning affection, they aim to earn your trust and control. Narcissists are incapable of genuine love, as their selfishness eclipses any capacity for empathy. Remember, anyone with ulterior motives will say anything to achieve their goals. So, when someone professes their love, scrutinize their intentions. Are they seeking something from me? And if so, what? 
Do they exhibit controlling behavior? These questions can help you discern the truth behind their facade. Narcissists weave intricate webs of deception, even when it comes to recounting their past. They're masters of fabrication, often concocting elaborate tales to paint themselves in a favorable light. Picture this, a narcissist boasting, I led the team to victory in the championship, despite never having been part of the team. If you've encountered such audacious claims, share your experiences in the comments below. Furthermore, narcissists are allergic to admitting fault. They refuse to acknowledge wrongdoing, preferring to twist the narrative or shift blame onto others. Driven by an insatiable need to appear flawless, they strive to maintain the illusion of perfection, deflecting responsibility for their actions. This inflated self-image extends to their relationships, where they strive to portray themselves as the epitome of an ideal partner, absolving themselves of any wrongdoing. Remember, narcissists are skilled manipulators who will stop at nothing to preserve their facade. Beware, for narcissists also fabricate their very identity. Trust is a luxury they can ill afford. They craft elaborate personas to conceal their deep-seated insecurities and insatiable craving for adulation. Deluded by their own grandiosity, they believe the lies they spin, oblivious to the profound selfishness that underpins their behavior. While they may appear self-centered, a closer examination reveals a profound lack of self-worth driving their actions. Unable to define themselves, they seek validation through the manipulation of others' emotions. Narcissists are adept at crafting illusions of success, often embellishing their achievements or outright fabricating them. They'll regale others with tales of grandeur, claiming victories they never earned. For instance, they may boast about clinching first place in a prestigious competition when, in reality, they barely made it past the starting line. Their relentless pursuit of self-aggrandizement knows no bounds, as they strive to maintain an aura of superiority at all costs. When asked about their occupation, they'll assert their dominance, portraying themselves as indispensable figures within their field, despite lacking the credentials to back up their claims. In truth, narcissists are masters of deception, spinning elaborate narratives to bolster their fragile egos. Moreover, narcissists manipulate emotions like master puppeteers, weaving intricate webs of deceit to serve their selfish desires. They're chameleons, adept at adopting personas that cater to their immediate needs. They'll feign affection and empathy, professing love and concern while harboring ulterior motives. Their words are but hollow promises, designed to elicit compliance and further their agenda. Beware their deceptive charms, for behind their facade lies a heart devoid of genuine empathy, capable only of manipulation and exploitation. When faced with adversity, they'll offer empty apologies, fakening remorse while secretly reveling in your misery. Trust not in their words, for they are but tools in their arsenal of deceit. A self-absorbed deceiver may proclaim, I'll turn over a new leaf. Many narcissists resort to such falsehoods to gain the trust of their victims. They'll weave elaborate tales in an attempt to persuade you that they've undergone a profound transformation, but it's all smoke and mirrors. Why are narcissists so resistant to change? Simply put, they're only interested in keeping you within arm's reach to serve their own needs repeatedly. Narcissists are incapable of change because their colossal egos blind them to the flaws in their behavior or mindset. They lack the capacity to feel remorse for their past transgressions or contemplate the consequences of their future actions. Narcissists are prolific liars, weaving intricate webs of deception to maintain their grip on power and control. These falsehoods vary in complexity, but their ultimate objective remains unchanged, to retain, manipulate 
and safeguard their selfish sources of gratification. Ever noticed how some guys, who might not fit the conventional standards of attractiveness, always seem to attract the most captivating women? It's not some elusive secret, it's all about honing your social skills. Here are some tips to transform into the kind of guy women can't resist. Ditch the Hollywood charm. It's time to master the real art of connection. Are you prepared to level up your social game? Let's dive in. Picture this. You enter a room bustling with women, and without uttering a word, all eyes are on you. Sounds like a superpower, right? Well, you're about to acquire it. Contrary to popular belief, you don't need flashy cars or designer clothes to master the art of attraction. All you need are fundamental social skills you employ every day. Stay tuned as we unveil the top nine social skills that will magnetize people towards you. If you're nodding in agreement, thinking, yes, this is exactly what I've been missing, do us a favor and smash that like button, subscribe, and share this video with friends who could also benefit from some social wizardry. Let's not just play the game, let's redefine its rules. Are you ready to embark on this journey? 1. Master the art of attentive listening. Ever being commended for your listening skills? If not, it's time to cultivate them. Knowing how to listen attentively is akin to possessing a secret weapon in the realm of forging friendships. When in the company of a woman, focus on hearing her out rather than monopolizing the conversation with your own anecdotes. Why? Because being truly heard fosters a sense of appreciation and connection. In an era dominated by incessant phone usage, taking the time to inquire about her day, aspirations and passions during a date speaks volumes. Then, immerse yourself in her world, actively engage with what she shares, pose follow-up questions, and demonstrate genuine interest. It's not just about nodding along, it's about delving into her experiences. This approach not only sets you apart, but also leaves a lasting impression. 2. Embrace a touch of enigma. Here's a tantalizing twist. Refrain from laying all your cards on the table at once. A hint of mystery can add allure to your persona. If a woman displays interest in your narratives, don't divulge every detail too quickly. It's not about playing mind games. It's about injecting a dose of intrigue. How does it work? Human nature gravitates towards the enigmatic and the unknown. By withholding complete transparency, you pique her curiosity and leave her yearning to unravel more. However, exercise caution not to withhold information excessively. You're not evading her, but rather enticing her to draw closer. Give it a try and watch the level of intrigue soar. 3. Showcase your societal value. Ever noticed how people gravitate towards those who value them? Instead of triggering jealousy, demonstrate your worth by showcasing your multifaceted persona. Begin by lavishing her with undivided attention, then gradually extend your social radar to include others in your circle. This displays your amiable nature and enhances your appeal. It subtly communicates to her that you're someone worth investing time in. However, tread cautiously. The objective is to exhibit genuine care for others, not to toy with their emotions. Authenticity reigns supreme in this endeavor. 4. Spark a desire for more conversation. Recall the anticipation stirred by the cliffhanger ending of your favorite TV series. Aim for a similar effect in your conversations. Leave people yearning to know what happens next. Seize upon a natural high point during an engaging dialogue, then gradually bring it to a close. This not only leaves a lasting impression of a delightful interaction, but also instills a desire to continue conversing. Cultivate a conversational rhythm that fosters anticipation for future encounters, ensuring each meeting is eagerly anticipated. 5. 
harness the power of three minutes. The first three minutes of an interaction are pivotal. They shape the trajectory of the entire encounter. Utilize this brief window to establish an immediate connection. Employing her name during this initial phase can foster an instant bond. It's a simple yet potent technique. Casually integrate her name into the conversation three times, enhancing the personal touch and expediting the acquaintance process. However, maintain authenticity. Excessive use may come across as contrived. Strike the right balance to ensure those crucial first minutes leave a lasting impression. 6. Harness the magic of a subtle smile. Never underestimate the enchanting power of a smile. However, here's the twist. It's not about flashing a wide grin constantly. Instead, it's about sporting a modest, self-assured smile. This understated expression renders you approachable and elevates the conversational ambience. It subtly communicates your enjoyment of the interaction and your appreciation for being present. Employed as a nonverbal cue, this simple gesture can infuse even mundane conversations with depth and significance. 7. Embrace the art of genuine praise. Authentic compliments serve as potent tools for fostering affinity. The key lies in sincerity. Pay attention to the finer details, a choice piece of jewellery or the meticulousness of an outfit. These subtle acknowledgements demonstrate attentiveness and admiration for her preferences. Not only do they uplift her spirits, but they also distinguish you by showcasing your attentiveness to her efforts. With practice, this skill becomes second nature 